everybody. It's me, Julianne Hartman with Healing Journeys Today. This is The Journey. And we are on episode two of the Ashley Miller story, which has been really like incredible. I mean, like crazy, incredible, eye-opening. Like I've known Ashley for many years, but I didn't know any of this really. I knew like one or two things, but slightly. Um, I actually met Ashley because she, uh, Butch would be would teach um, in the uh, I think arts and entertainment. Uh, mm -hmm. third, it was a third year track at Karis Bible College. We would go there every year and Ashley was one of the um, students. And so that's how we met. And then she went to work for Karis Bible College. And do you want, I want to get, I want to start, I want to start where you left off in the lap, last episode, but I want you to tell people like, you know, your experience with Karis, like when you got there and then when you started working for them. Oh yeah, sure. So uh, I got called to go to Karis Bible College for a third year. So in order to attend media school, I had to go through first and second year. So uh, I was like down for it. Let's go. Uh, mission trip was awesome. It was a really good experience. I had a lot of good classmates, a uh, lot more good people that I met in the AVL team, um, way better than my experience in high school. And uh, at that point too, I had conquered my illiteracy issue too. So I, I wasn't like, oh no, what's going to happen? I was able to confidently take on any task and uh, and and be able to help. So then you're then so you started working at the Bible College like for how many years now have you been there? Oh, uh, so I started working after third year media school. It was directly after we did the summer arts program, which was to make a short film. Um, so I, I, that's something too. Like you should know. Like I wrote the script for that. We all wrote scripts. Mine got chosen. Uh, I was like, okay, I wrote something practical that we could film, and then I was also. Uh, they also voted me to be the director. So I was like, that's, that's a major testimony to my high school. I was like, I wish I, like there was like at least two teachers that were rooting for me. I was like, man, I wish they're not there anymore. I'm like, I don't know how to track them down. I was like, I wish I could tell them that. Um, Cause I, they were really hoping for that. They knew I wanted to write comic books and get involved in the industry in that aspect or do something within the media entertainment. Uh, I've always wanted to be in the media and entertainment. So I was just like, this is awesome. So, and uh, I had a lot of help. Uh, with uh, the script and revising it and stuff because first time writing a story down well with help so I was like this is great so uh, directly after that I ended up getting hired uh, with the AVL team and I've been there since uh, I got hired in was it 2017 so and I've been there since and I was just recently transferred over to AWMI last September so I'm in AWMI TV department now and we're helping with the broadcast and creating promos and writing scripts. Wow. So you're seven years. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. So if you did not watch the first episode, you need to go back and watch it because it sets everything up. But yes, she was illiterate. Yes. Her, her dad passed when she was in middle school. Uh, it was right before middle school. Okay, right before middle school. Her, her brother uh, was killed in a car accident and her mother had breast cancer. My God. And her future brother-in-law also was killed in an airplane accident. Man, that's a lot for anybody. Okay, so let's pick up where we were on the last episode. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to leave anything out, but I want everybody to know this is where it's at. So please go back and watch because there's so much said. So go ahead. Uh, well, we left off on the last episode that we discovered Believer's Authority, which right. set up us starting, we found... Andrew Womack's television show. And I actually discovered William Federer too. So I think this is kind of cool. This is all adding up. And we would just let Andrew and like William Federer play. And I think my mom would have like a couple of other ministers play in the background. And uh, I, I would be entering into design competitions that I was able to finally read what the requirements were. And uh, I entered in, I, I usually would end at a high running, but I never quite got there because I was still learning. I, I, that's something else too. Uh, I didn't have YouTube, like, uh, and I didn't have a really good internet connection. Things would time out. I could maybe download a PDF. My mom got me the Adobe Suite because she knew uh, digital like drawing was like the future. So like hand drawing, like I would have to learn digital in order for my art to like survive. And uh, I'm self-taught, God taught. I always say God taught. I'm God taught in Photoshop and uh after effects and illustrator and then premiere karis helped and my mentors there helped me learn premiere and how to edit but 
the weird thing was, is that like, I would show my mom, she's like, how'd you make that? I'm like, well, I do this keystroke and you do this. She's like, how'd you learn that? I went, I don't know. But what I did do, I told her, I was like, I pray to God when you got me the box, I said, man created this, but you created man. The microchips that were created to run this program, you created. So you can help me learn this program. And he did. And years later, I learned that what I asked was kind of what happened in uh, Exodus with Bezuel, who created the Ark of the Covenant and was filled with the Spirit. He was an artisan of that time. He's the first multimedia artist. And I, I got to find that out years later as well. So it's like, this is awesome. Like, God's just revealing more of his revelation and the arts in the Bible for me. And it just, it just confirmed a lot of stuff for me. So in the end, with the program playing in the background, Andrew Womack playing, he mentioned a third year program called Media School. And in the the time I was looking for schooling, I was thinking about Joe Kubert's uh, School of Cartooning. It was in New Jersey. But my mom wanted to go to Colorado to go to first two, two years of Karis Bible College. And I'm like, man, I could probably get a scholarship now that I'm in this position. I need to go to New Jersey probably. And then uh, Liberty University even had some media programs. And I didn't know Karis did until Andrew mentioned it. And I thought, go through two years. I want to go through two years anyway. And I get to go through third year. Okay, let's go. And we ended up like, that's a whole ordeal too. And how we even got to Colorado. That's a miracle that we even got to Colorado. And uh, we get to Colorado, register for school. Uh, it was surreal, to be honest, because I'd been in like on the East Coast my whole life. So uh, it, we didn't have to adjust the altitude. I mean, I got I lost breath on the stairs sometimes, but we never got altitude sickness. People kept on saying that. And we had miraculous connections. Like I, I met the lead for AVL before I even attended school. We came out for campus days first and uh, he remembered me. And I even like helped on one of those conferences and I was I was like not a student yet. Like he asked me questions and I helped with something. I forget what it was, but he was an awesome man. His name was Randall Montecule. He was like a really good mentor in the AVL program. So, yeah. Wow. All right. So um, also one thing I did not mention before was that you were dealing, you had dealt with depression as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to go yeah. back a little bit. And one other thing I wanted to go back to was who was POD? P POD was a band. Oh, yeah. That listen to that really helped that like you had your encounter with the Lord who was POD yeah. uh POD is uh their their full name is an acronym it's payable on death uh Sonny is the lead singer they're a band centered out of California and um I I my brother and I discovered them on a video game we had a we had a video game that was a music game not guitar hero it was something else uh, it's really obscure it was called frequency and then there was another one called amplitude it was just just a music game with hand-eye coordination you just use the controller and uh, we listened to one of the songs. I'm like, are they Christian? Because at that time, the only Christian bands I knew of was like Petra, Creed, and uh, a couple others. Like, But it was like not this kind of music with like rap. So was really into hardcore Linkin Park. And so it was like, P.O.D. is like right up to that standard. And I was like, where Linkin Park was talking about like struggles that I could relate to majorly, um, there was no answers. I was like, I could relate. And then it's funny because their music does evolve, but POD had answers. They they also talked about struggles. I was like, I deal with those struggles, especially depression. And they they nailed that in a lot of their music. And I'm like, but they gave an answer. And uh, I was just like, this is great because I didn't know they were Christian. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. I didn't know Christian music really even existed at the time. I knew there was some Christian rap, but at that time it was Christian rap was like really bad. <laughs> those were the dark days. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. So, all right. So let's go back. I know I kind of pulled that out of the last episode, but you mentioned it and I wanted to uh, get more of an understanding. So how did you like, what was depression like for you? Like what, what kind of habitual things were you doing? That oh were, my gosh. Like, it, it was a cycle. Darker, to darker. Yeah, it's a cycle. Um, I, I'd go through like, why am I here and not my brother? Because he had more potential, like way more like my, my, my brother and sister are like, uber smart like really smart um like my my sister has like a complete uh, memorization like she can remember the notes that she took she says she visualizes it so when she would take tests she would just in her mind pull out in her bag and look at her sheet in her head and see all the answers i'm like that's crazy gosh that's my like brother power. 
No one ever taught him. He took a, he took apart a Chevelle and upgraded it. Like no one taught him. He just read car books all the time, like part books. He would read part books. He'd read those all the time. And then he also uh, flew a plane with my brother-in-law and the instructor was there for that. And he was just like, oh, land it. And my brother did all everything. He's like, oh, what flight school are you from? I'm like, he doesn't go to school because I was in the plane with him because I got to ride along. And uh, he was like, well, what flight school? Like there has to be a flight school. And my brother's like, flight simulator. <laughs> so this guy's like, I'm out of a job. <laughs> like the video games can teach. My brother caught on a lot of things engineer wise. My sister caught on a lot of things, psychological and medical. So she ended up going into the medical field and uh, she could also like draw differently than me. And I always thought it was better. So a lot of my struggles were why am I here? Because I can't read. Uh, I felt like, like men have more uh, opportunities in the world on top of it. And they could, they could help my, like, I thought my brother would be able to help my mom more than I could. I was younger, so I couldn't even drive her to her appointments. Um, she had to lie to the doctor in order to leave after like a surgery. Like I had to get in the car, drive out of the parking lot. I'm like 14 or something. And then she had a switch and she's like, she's like, I had to take a nap. So she took a nap in the parking lot. We drew far enough away into a different one. And then she's like, okay, we got to go to the hotel. I'm like, man, I can't help my mom because I'm I'm too young to get like uh, a permit. And uh, I'm not strong enough to like, like pick her up and uh, help her with walking and things like that. She, she was having a hard time. And I was like, I, I can't, I can't like fix things around the house. I like, I, that was really bad. I guess a lot of my depression came from like comparison and God says to not compare ourselves amongst each other. And I did that constantly. I was I would even look at some of the special ed students. They didn't belong there. They were, they were capable more than me. And I even confronted them with that. I'm like, why are you here? They're like, it's a free pass. I'm like, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of the school system? Like, I wish I could take a language class. I couldn't even take a language. They wouldn't let us. I couldn't go to Ellis Island because it was part of the special ed program. And they said they didn't want the special ed kids going to Ellis Island. So we didn't get field trips. Uh, my first school gave me field trips. This school didn't. They, they looked down on us majorly. And... Um, it was just like, it was a struggle because I was constantly comparing, like, why am I here and not my brother? Why isn't my dad here? Like, what am I supposed to do in this world? Like, I like to draw. What is that going to do? How am I going to change anybody's life? And how am I going to even make an impact in the world? So a lot of it, again, comparison. And I would, I would bury a lot of it. That wasn't good. So I'd bury a lot of it because it would just get worse. You know, when you bury stuff, it just comes back out worse. And uh, again, the release of that um, complete handing over of depression was at that battle cry event through teen mania, uh, Ron Luce talking about how to change the world and hearing like the one kid, I'll never forget him. I wish I could, I could meet him again. I remember him screaming, I want the cross. The audience was quiet. We were praying for something. And for some reason, randomly, he just stood up and screamed, I want the cross. And I remember all these kids turning their life over to God. And I'm like, man, I'm meant for more. And uh, I just knew, like, I don't know, like, I think God took my depression. I didn't know how to tell him to take it. I think he took it then. And uh, because when I came out of Battle Cry, like, I was like, oh, I, I, I don't feel like a loser anymore. Um, I mean, granted, the enemy tried to attack me with some depression uh, a couple of years ago, but that was, that was different. It wasn't the same thing. So, yeah, it was all God. And it was scripture. It was majorly majorly getting into the New Testament, especially. Well, see, that's where I think people miss. I mean, yes, it was a, an, um, uh, there was an emotional uh, response to that, but you had the word in you, right? So, I mean, whether yes. it had come to life before, but the word in you then came to life because of that experience that you had. So, and how you sustained it was by the word. It's not right. like the constant emotional stuff. And that's where I think we're really getting into trouble in the church because it's all about our feelings and yeah. about how, that feeling of that euphoria and that com and listen, who doesn't love an amazing conference? I mean, um, uh, a worship conference, yeah. or whatever, who doesn't love that? It like, yeah. it makes you, like you just feel more free than anything else. But, but, but then when you get home, what sustains you? Right. And again, I was prepared. Uh, it, like, uh, if you go back and like, listen, I, I, I was reading God's word. I had gotten over my illiteracy issue. I was reading it for several months before I went to that event. And I was like in it every day. And uh, I would read my other novel. Like I was eating up books. Um, uh, Ted Decker was like one of them. So I was like reading all of these books as, as much as possible. And then I started reading history books finally because I got the go ahead. 
So I started reading history books and I was like, this is great. And so I, my my heart was prepared for what happened and for, I didn't even realize like I even handed it over. I just felt really free and I told God like, I'm yours. And uh, I think that freed me because I felt a weight lift. And after I got done with that event, everyone's like, you look like you're 12. Like if I, if I pull up some pictures for you, Julian, like you're, I'm like 19 and everyone thought I was 12. I'm like, he really does restore your youth. And I, I, my heart wasn't heavy anymore. His, his burden really is light. And uh, sometimes that sounds cliche. And in the moment that you're going through stuff, it's like, eh. and you, you, sometimes we forget. And I'm just like, no, I have to remember that that happened. And especially once that youth leader told me, you're going to forget this and you're going to go back to normal. I'm like, do you remember the way I was before? Do you want me to go back to that? Like, are you guys nuts? <laughs> like, they thought I was a troubled youth. I'm like, I'm not a troubled youth. Um, I just, I'm going through a lot right now. And so I just, I thought that was crazy that that, that youth leader was like wanting me to go back to that. Just punch someone like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stood up out of the bus and, and pointed my, my finger. I'm like, I'm not going to. So that yeah, is awesome. And you're just, you are that strong of a person, you know, strong willed as a person to say, no, I'm not going back to that. And just to prove him wrong. Right. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's awful that a youth, a youth pastor would say something like that. So now, um, okay. So then you, that, so that, that depression lifted, that is awesome. Yeah. Um, now you said that there was like, it took a miracle to get you to Colorado. So in all of this, are you now, you and your mom and your sister, I mean, whoever, I think your sister, you said had kind of disappeared for a while, but she, she's back. My mom, my mom's actually over in Philly right now, helping her with the kids. So oh. yeah. But now, so I'm saying at that time. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. So you were, um, again, it's a miracle. So what, what, what miracle happened to get you guys to Colorado? Oh, uh, well, um, that's, that's another story, Julianne. It might, might go over. Um, let me see if I can shorten this. Uh, our, all the finances that my dad had prepared for us had been taken uh, completely. Uh, we weren't able to, uh, we owned our own house. Uh, my dad made sure of that, but the problem was with property taxes. So then they ended up serving us, a, a, not a foreclosure, a sheriff sale. So we had to like do a rush sale. Again, that was a miracle. The, the real estate agent we did have was from a sister church. We should have just blown this church out of the water. Like, I don't know why we just kept on getting connected with these churches and it was the same church. It was just a sister church. Um, the first real estate agent was from that church and he was waiting for the sheriff sale so they could have somebody else swoop in and buy the property. We decided to go to a different church that had a lot of business people. I don't know how we, we would drive past it because my mom would help with dog training at PetSmart and we drive past it. And I'm like, you should try it. And we did, and we ended up meeting like a lot of business people that were uh, in the same belief that we were, and we met another real estate agent. That's how we found out everything that was going on. We ended up getting him on it. He beat the sheriff sale for us. Um, we ended up having to take a loss majorly on our house. And the sad thing is, is that we only lost it because of property taxes. My mom wasn't able to work. She was going through breast cancer. They They had her on oral chemo way too long. Um, my sister like thought maybe she had like Alzheimer's or something. I'm like, she doesn't, the doctor said it was something called uh, chemo brain where she was like having issues, like remembering things, like where she set things down. So we ended up doing a short sale right before the sheriff's sale, like literally days before the sheriff's sale, which that was a miracle. And, uh, we ended up going, okay, packed up all our stuff and got here checked out campus days first, drove back. We secured a place with a real estate agent from Kara. She was awesome. And when we were driving to Colorado, the landlord decided he would go with a different couple. I guess he didn't want Kara students. And uh, I was like, okay, like he, he didn't want that. He was like, this, this married couple, like they're not even going to be here that often. Like they work out of state. I'm going to go with them. And our real estate agent said we could pursue legal action because we'd signed and we'd paid and uh, he gave us back our deposit, um, but he like terminated the lease. And so we drove into Colorado. Literally, we crossed the state line. It said, welcome to Colorado. And we get this call. And we're just like, we have the, we have our dogs with us and our cat and our, all our stuff. And we're just like, where are we supposed to go? <laughs> like, what do we do now? 
um, there's nothing left in Pennsylvania. Like we let go of the month by month apartment that we had temporarily in order to transition over here. It's like, we have nothing to go to. We have to make this work. Like God's got to do something. He called us out here. He's got to provide. And this uh, sweet lady, we walked into Sam's because uh, I had a headache and I was praying over it and wouldn't go away. But I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just, I, I just let me just get some Tylenol. It's fine. So I got some Tylenol and the, there was a lady at the pharmacy area and she went, I don't know why she says she's like, where are you guys from? And we told her and she's like, are you missionaries? And I was like, no, but we we're wanting to attend the Bible college up in Woodland Park. And she's like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, where are you guys from? We told her. And then she's like, do you guys have a place to stay? And we're like, no. And she's like, you can stay in my place. I'm like, what? So she had to stay there for like two weeks until we could find a place. Wait, wait a minute. So she, did she live in Woodland Park? No, she lived in Colorado Springs. Oh, yeah. You're complete strangers. See, yeah. look what God is just like all over your life. Yeah, she let her dogs even like come in and everything. They're they're well behaved. My mom's a dog trainer, so yeah, she let us come in in the pharmacy. Yeah, Says she was one of those little tables like giving out samples at the pharmacy, like for like some sort of like vitamin. And said you could just come stay with me. Yeah, yeah, and we stayed with her for like two weeks until our our current real estate agent, who felt bad for us, like found us a place which we're currently still in. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look what that is. See, and you know what I love about you is that you're choosing to to ex, you know be excited and to rejoice in the things that has been done for you, like that lady, like getting your place, instead of trying to go back into that the memories and all that of things that were, you know, all the the difficulties and stuff. Right. That's a choice that you made. Right. And you made the choice. Right. Uh, we just rolled with the punches. Uh, I, I guess I learned that from my parents too. You just, you just, I always have a saying, like everybody knows I say it at, at work. I'm like, pivot, you just pivot. You just got to pivot. I was like, my, my dad did that really well. My mom did it really well. I learned it in martial arts. Literally um, you mess up somebody's opponents coming at you. You just gotta, you gotta pivot. You gotta move. You, you can't stop. If you stop, you're going to get laid out. So and if you do get laid out, like there's still a promise for that. God says, fall down seven, get up eight. Yeah. And if you turn the eight to the side, it's an infinity. Just keep on getting back up. You you won't lose. Ashley, that is so good. You know, you just mentioned a little bit ago that you had some depression a couple of years ago. Yeah. And what was that about? Um, uh, there were, there was some stuff going on personally with like a, a friend and, um, uh, some things going on with my sister. Um, so I, it, 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 it really, I guess, I don't know why, I guess I didn't, I, I know God delivered me from it, but I think there were some things mentally I didn't process. And, and the weird thing was I had a moment where, uh, I had these candies, somebody got all these candies and it was a specific kind of candy. It was like Heath bars and something else. And I was like, Somebody's like, what do we do with all these? And I, I, that's probably what triggered it. I was like, oh, I know who we can give these to. And then I just lost it. I broke it. They were my brother's favorite candies. And for some reason I was like, oh, we can give it to him. And I couldn't, I couldn't picture where he was. I'm like, where, where is he? And I just lost it. And that kind of like spiraled into that depression again. Cause I was like, wait, why? And I, I like had to mentally then physically, cause we're three part being, with God, work through that, and uh, yeah, that, that was that was not a good time. <laughs> it was not a good time at all. Right. And I was with I was with a friend who like didn't get it, and uh, they were using God's scripture like to kind of attack me. And I was just like, I don't think that's God. And uh, like, I got to a point where I was like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm insane. Like, is there something wrong with me? Because they even told me I didn't process like all the deaths correctly. I'm like, well, God help me. Like a battle cry. Like, like it, it just caused me to like go backwards. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I had to push through it. Cause I was like, how, how did I get here? And and you have to remember like how, where you came from. You have to remember that like uh, Joseph put up markers. I was like, I didn't put up markers and that was my fault. I only put up some markers. So uh, that was bad on me. And uh, I also started questioning whether or not I could even hear from God because uh, there was like conflicting messages from this one friend. And I'm like, that doesn't, when God told me that, I'm like, am I, am I not hearing from him? Anymore? Your faith cannot re be relied on somebody else. Uh, that other person needs to either confirm 
faith or, uh, and there is a such thing as correction as well, but like, they have to like, there has to be an uplifting. There has to be like, yes, there's time for, like iron to iron, iron to iron is hard. Like if you ever saw a sword get made, like it gets beat down and put in the fire several times. Iron to iron is like, it's a good thing. You, if you have a friend like that, that's good. But if you have a friend that's like making you out and you're not even being made into a sword, like there's beating you and then throwing you around, like that's not God, that's not God at all. So, and, and you can't blame that person either. Like they have their own woes, they have their own struggles and you cannot allow your faith and what you believe in God to be rested on somebody else. Cause if you put people on pedestals, like they're going to fall. And, uh, like I always say that don't put me on a pedestal. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> so, cause we're all, we're all human and we're all like going through our, our relationship with God too. We can fall. And, uh, if, if my relationship is reliant on your relationship with God and I screw up, like, I, that'd be horrible. So we have to make sure that we're we're in that mindset that's not reliant on other people. It's it's between us and God, and other people can confirm and reaffirm and encourage. And yes, there might be some correction that God speaks through them, but it's not going to be a beat down to an extent where you're not even recognizable. You don't even look like anything a blacksmith would have made because God's the master blacksmith, and you there's a hammer over here and a piece of metal on the other and God's using it to like build something. Wow. Um, Ashley. So how, I mean, what, what's your daily life look like? I mean, how, how is it important to stay, keep your mind and keep your eyes on the word? Um, you know, like kind of give like what your daily routine is. Cause a lot of people ask like, you know, do you read every day? Do you just like, for me, I, I walk and I read. I spend time with him without the Bible in my hand. And then I spend time in his words. So tell everybody what your routine is. Uh, I would, I, yeah, I would like to like point that out. Like there are times, like there are days when I'm like not in the word, but I'm reflecting on it. I just went through something called 75 hard and it required me to do an outdoor workout every day. Uh, there's more to that program as well. Really. I recommend it. Um, and it, it caused me to think. So I, I would think a lot on some days and then other days I would just focus on one, like what I said, you can focus on one scripture and it's the living word. And that's why it can change and be something else that's applying to you in that moment, or even to somebody, you know. Um, so for me, it's like focus on a scripture or then you might go in and read a chapter. I did a whole study on Exodus and Bezalel, finding out about the first media artist, uh, multimedia artist, and uh, just find, find, find those moments. I do know this, like, don't get so focused on the word that if you miss a day, you're angry. Cause I'm like, that's, that's not normal. <laughs> I was like, you have to think about like the fact that God's word didn't exist during Job's time, but he had communion and relationship. Um, Enoch had that so much. So he, he went up. So uh, I, I'm just like, I've seen other people that I've known that got so focused on the, just the physical book aspect that they were just seeing the words and they weren't acting it out in life. And I noticed that if you, if you don't act out what's, what's in your heart, cause it says it's in your heart. If you don't act out what's in your heart, it's not going to help anybody out there. You're not going to reflect it. So reading the word. Yes, definitely. Mentally memorizing it. Sure. But if you're not actually like talking to God, like, what do you mean by this? Like, why'd you say this? Or, Oh, I really like how you said, like, if you're not having, con like, I, I, my dad told me Jesus was with me all the time. I guess that's why my relationship's a little different uh, with not having any mentorship or a church that I mean, that actually believe this. My dad said at one point, I, I told him I watched the Ninja Turtles movie and I was like, I watched that. And I remember you guys telling us we couldn't and it came on. I watched it. My dad went, was it good? Oh well, yeah. He's like, how about this? Cause he, he told me, he's like, I'm not going to be around much longer. And I, you can't always be like telling me like what you did wrong. And he's like, I, I want to guide you so that you you can know what's right and what's wrong. He's like, so how about this? Would you have watched that movie with Jesus? Because he's with you. And I was like, yeah, it was actually really fun. The jokes were really cool. And I, I like the martial arts. And there was nothing bad in it. And he was like, if you feel like you, because if you need to know, Jesus is literally sitting next to you. Would you subject that to him? Would you feel uncomfortable? Like my dad told me, he's like, he's literally around you all the time. So like you can talk to him at any moment. And so I guess that's why like I can go through chapters of the Bible or I can read the scripture and focus on that for the whole week. And then there's some days where I'm like not reading God's word, but I'm going on a walk with him and I'm in the car going to like 
Colorado Springs or something and I'm by myself, I'm like jamming out with God, whatever music I'm listening to. Sometimes I go down without music. Like I literally think he's in the passenger seat. Like that's where I'm at. And that's where the people have to be at. He's not only just in a printed word, he's the living word. And uh, like, even when I was illiterate, I was saying scriptures and, and people at the church thought I wasn't illiterate. They thought I was lying because I was repeating scriptures. I'm like, well, that's just because of my relationship. Yeah. I was like, you'll remember what your mom and dad said, even if you don't read their journal. So, but you should read their journal because they wrote letters to you. So you should read that. Um, it'll just confirm things. So yeah, I, I just, yeah. Read God's word and also don't get so focused that it's the print. You, you have to live it out as well. Yeah. Well, it says, don't be a hearer only, but be a doer of the word. And mm -hmm. a lot of times yeah. people, that means I got to go serve at the church. Yeah. It, it can, but the doer is do what is the truth in your heart. Yeah. Faith is action. Right. What you yeah. heard went into your heart. Now you're going to do. Now you're going to live that out. So yeah. actually are an amazing woman i just want you to know that <laughs> you really are and you've got you there's so much more to you than what you put off <laughs> let me just say that this is part <laughs> of the most deepest conversation you and i've ever had and you uh actually some of you would recognize ashley because she does the av for uh, healing journeys today conferences and so and just always such a you know you, you know you don't even know that you're there like you don't complain you just do your job you do it well you do it so well and we just appreciate you so much and everything you've done for us, you know, up to thank you. Point. So, but she is an incredible woman who loves Jesus and has just trusted him in every part of your life. And you've had a lot of reasons to say it, to maybe not trust him and to blame him. And so, wow. So would you pray for everybody oh. uh, before we sign off? Sure. No problem. Okay. Uh, Lord, I just pray over everyone that just viewed this and uh, the view future testimonies as well, Lord, that they have the revelation and the spark that's just needed that turns into an inferno for you that's going to touch lives and impact their community. Lord, I just thank you for healing journeys today and the lives that it's changing and the healings mentally, physically, and spiritually that are taking place. And I just thank you for the Hartmans, Lord, for them starting this up and just gathering people as they go. And uh, I just thank you, Lord, for the impact that it has made and it's going to continue to make. In Jesus' name, amen. So like we said, there are two episodes. You need to go back and watch the other one, the first one, so that you get a really good foundation about what we're talking about in the second one. So Ashley, thank you so much, sweetie. You are a real, have been a blessing to this platform in many ways and now being on the journey as well. So thank you so much. And everybody, all of our viewers, thank you for watching. You know, I also want to make sure that you guys are all subscribing. I know a lot of times we watch these videos, but we don't necessarily subscribe to the channel, but we'd like to know like how many people are actually with us all the time. And the way to know that is, is if you subscribe. And of course there's no like fee to it, but yeah, definitely do that. And we also have coming up is the sound mind summit with uh, Dr. Kevin Chapman. And this is going to be July 19th and 20th that, you know, he is what we call, we call him the fear and anxiety doctor. And he's coming here for a two day, a two day summit, which you have to come to both days. I'm not letting people just come to one. So call in well, <laughs> Do you not like that, Ashley? I don't say call in sick. I say call in well. Yeah. <laughs> but because you can't call in sick, you're healed. You can't call in sick. Yeah. Anyway, so we call in well. So I want you there because it's going to be really something that is going to change your life. We did one day in December and it for five hours and it changed people's lives. Now imagine two full days of him just literally explaining things, um, showing you ways uh, that you've been duped and that you've been lied to and mm -hmm. get the freedom that you have been praying for. So you don't want to miss that. So you can go on um, our website and also, you know, you can sign up. We have a QR code. You can sign up for that as well. So I love you all so much. Thank you. And we will see you next time on the journey. Bye-bye.